we have one more match for you. It is a best of one, and it is to decide the third place in Group B between Team MP and Team Liquid. They've tied on points, and now it's time to separate them. You might be asking why, because if the top two positions have already gone through to the upper bracket and the other four go to the lower bracket, what's, what's the difference? And that would be a fair question. The difference is the team that finish in third get to choose the team they want to play from the other group. So a big decision for both of these teams. It, will it be MP or Liquid? We've got Purge back with us on the couch alongside PPD. I, I, we were just talking with Peter just before. I quite like these tiebreakers. I wouldn't have minded if had we had a few more. I know there's a few, few people saying, oh, Christ, we don't want loads of tiebreakers. But actually, I don't mind them. More yeah. Dota, it's all good. Yeah, and they're best of ones. They're they're pretty intense. The, yeah. it, it must be so scary uh, trying to think about which heroes you're going to draft because you, if you draft the wrong one, the game could get extremely hard or uh, a lot easier. Uh, there's a lot of tilt factor. Um, yeah. I mean, ultimately, it's not as scary as like a best of one elimination because it is just seeding, but yeah. um, there's some a lot of stake here that could change a lot of the tournament, uh, maybe adjust some people's end placements when yeah. it's all done. Uh, and, and a little bit scary, Peter, for, for MP in particular, having been on, on the cusp of making the top two in the group, now know that they're definitely in the lower bracket and could end up having to play a much harder team if they lose this next game. It's, it's almost yeah. like a horrible feeling I know, they for prob them. They probably had high hopes coming into today. Yeah. Unfortunately, it just didn't work out for them. Now they have an opportunity to kind of, you know, once again, choose their own fate. Yeah. Um, if they can win, Liquid's a tough team, and Liquid's kind of been warming up. Yeah, and, and they've played better today. They've come in knowing they had to win 2-0 to have any chance at all, and they've done that. So... I don't know. It, it, uh, for them, I suppose Liquid, it's almost a, well, we were in last place this morning and now we've got a shot at third. So for them, it's it's a it's a, a momentum-based thing. They they could be in good shape. How is it even possible? I thought for sure they were going to be right? at the bottom Shiva's, of the Shiva's out here telling us that they've fallen off a cliff and they were awful this morning. And here they are almost here they getting, are. Well, they got to win the tiebreaker. On, but, yeah, uh, but on the verge of third place. What are they at, six points? They do, yeah, tied with MP. Okay, yeah. so five matches, that means they only had to win. They, if they just got like two 2-0s, two they would have been at that level, which they seems would. so such like such a low barrier yeah. eventually. Well, they were one of the... Uh, Wings were the other side of the coin. They Because they won clean series, two zeros, they picked up a lot of points, whereas they also lost a lot of series and therefore didn't really lose that many points because mm -hmm. if they'd drawn, they'd only got one more anyway. Liquid, on the other hand, suffered from the whole three-point system because they had three draws. <laughs> So that hurt them more than it almost hurt any of the other teams. They had that one loss yesterday, which then put them at the bottom of the table. So they had to win 2-0 this, this morning to have any chance of um, playing a part in this 3-4 playoff. And that's exactly what they've done. Oh, maybe they maybe they fixed some of their issues. Uh, obviously having some trouble in some of the games, losing one, winning the other. So Liquid's, Liquid's riding a high, NP's riding a low. A real yeah. low. Liquid had to win two games, they did it. NP yeah. had to win one. And they didn't. They didn't. Yeah. Which would lead us to believe that mentally you would probably favour Liquid in this matchup, wouldn't you? I would say yes, definitely. I favour Liquid for sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I, is, I've always gonna said MP's going to lose. So. Yeah, Drops <laughs> is going to start momentarily. <laughs> you've, been, you've been a bit mean to the old team MP. I like the, I like their team and I like their players. I just, I don't know, I just think they're underdogs always. Mm. Okay. Well, they've definitely exceeded expectations here, regardless of what happens, because I think most people had them fifth or sixth in this group. Uh, not as a detriment to them, but the quality of this group mm -hmm. was so yeah. high. Yeah, we that's didn't we didn't expect them to do so hot. That's the good thing about also like playing this tiebreaker in Group B is that you know worst case scenario they have to play against the, like the with the second from the bottom of yeah. Group A, which is yeah. still like VGJ or uh, Faceless. At the yeah, bottom I don't think either of those two opponents is like too tough for either of these teams. I think that regardless of the matchup, I think Group B will be the favorite, right. uh, which is point. nice. Because then if you were if this was like a tiebreaker for Group A, it's like you're playing up against. Mm, who, who well, got you, could, you could end up against uh, the bottom two in, in Group B, with one of which is EG. Yeah. Yeah, or, uh, or Vitality, which is the other one in the bottom. Yeah, those are scary. Yeah, that is scary. I mean, I almost wouldn't want to finish third or fourth in the other group. You want to finish lower. Yeah, third would be fine, <laughs> but yeah. having to play a tiebreaker to, yeah. to convince it, it would be tough. Yeah, and yeah, that's LFY that finished third in that group, so... They get to choose which. Uh, I think we're gonna. See, it was Boston Major was EG Wings round one as well, wasn't it? Yep. Yeah. So I think that we're gonna see it again here. Could could very could likely be, could be EG Wings in the first round of the lower bracket, which would be uh, crazy to start things off. Really crazy. Uh, I don't know how how would the EG boys feel about that? Would they be okay? Beat them I mean, last time. Yeah, yeah, and you've just got to beat the team in front of you, right? You just, that's the attitude you've got that's to how have. It goes. Yeah. Doesn't matter who it is. You, you play. You've got to play everyone eventually at some point. That's true, hmm. but you can learn a lot from a winner bracket loss. Yeah, it's a nice, it's a nice gift to have. You have experience. Yep. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah for sure. A little bit. Yeah. It's a different – the group stage is super helpful, though. People, teams yeah. have learned. that. I mean, we've seen the meta change every single day here. Yes. And – that's going to continue to develop over the next few days as teams practice up against each other. So Talking to meta, what would you say is the meta right now? Like, what, what do you what, like after all the group stage? What's like top five heroes? Like, Lena's obviously in there, but Lena, Magnus, Monkey, Monkey King, yeah, um, Monkey King and Earth Spirit are kind of like yeah, the fours. Earth definitely been picked up. Off laners are Magnus and Centaur, I guess. Yeah. Centaur, we Centaur has had the most picks of any offline. seen a little bit less Centaur. Mids, we either have Alchemist or we have Lena Ember. Yeah. Maybe Invoker, too. Invoker yeah, I think we've seen a lot certain, of Invoker. For certain teams. Yeah. Uh, carries have been, what, Lifestealer and Juggernaut? Mainly Basically Life Juggernaut. Heroes that are good with Magnus. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's either like either one team picks Magnus and the other team takes away Juggernaut or, or Lifestealer, and then, or Magnus gets banned, and then maybe, maybe we'll see a different game here with Magnus being banned. Yeah. It's like they either want the Empower Heroes with Magnus, or the other team wants to take away the Empower Heroes from Magnus. Yeah. We've uh, we've seen the Liquid Bands. I'm going to just call it the Liquid Ban meta now, uh, which is basically IO Invoker. A Bannon's in the pool. A Bannon's in the pool, but IO Invoker is gone, and has gone every time any team has played Liquid at this event. Really? I think, I, I, round I think IO has untapped potential. Has for anybody played teams. it yet? No. no. I've seen it banned. It's, it's banned, quite it's a few banned times. against Liquid every game. It's not been played at all yet. So is the thought just they're just better? They're just the IO team? Like, you <laughs> just don't even <laughs> they bother? They are the IO team. And you don't want to give Miracle the Invoker ever. All right. Which is why he's had that ban against him in every game. Well, for that's Liquid, that's pretty easy, pretty easy to plan for. Yeah, I was going to say, being so strong with those two heroes means that the, it almost gives them a. A slight advantage before teams, they even start the draft. Teams might mix it up, though, as the tournament progresses, sure. especially as Liquid is having more success dealing with these two first bands. Yeah. Teams might think, oh, Liquid's, you know, they've, they've kind of figured out playing or without those two heroes. Maybe we give them the Wisp or yeah. give them... Especially in best maybe of threes. Not give, maybe not give them Invoker, but... No, maybe not. But in best of threes, you kind of want to go, okay, we'll give them what they want first game to see what they, yeah, how you, they play you it. You can play around with out. it a little yeah. bit. You, you have a game to lose. Yeah. Whereas in the group stage, kind of every game mattered. Yeah. So the Dazzle opening here, um, it's, it's kind of an important hero. Time. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Dazzle was really important in the last matchup, though. I saw him picked almost every game. <laughs> Funky King Lina. No, Legion Commander. All right. That's a hero Mind Control likes a lot. He's had a lot of success on it. I saw him playing it earlier today. Doing very well. Uh, him and Dazzle both are... Legion and Dazzle both sort of counter each other in some ways. So kind of like... I kind of like it as an opener. It obviously is really strong laning as well. So right now Liquid just solidifies their lanes are great. And no matter what that opening, it's like, I, I don't think there's much that uh, those two heroes are bad against. It's such a safe opener for Liquid. Yeah, LC is okay. You just, you're missing some tools of other heroes in that kind of three position. A lot of times we see three and fours with lots of lockdown, whether That's it's true. Sardars or Sand Kings or Pudges. Reinitiation basically, yeah, like more so than just one. Yeah. And now they're kind of only really dealing with a blink and a single target duel for a stun from Legion Commander, and then Monkey King doesn't really have. I mean, I guess when he has Basher, he just has like an AoE Ravage. But um, until that point, not a lot of control. So Ursa, really good laning matchup against Legion. So if they need to leave him solo, he'll be be okay. So that is end piece meta, leaving solo, leaving their carry solo against the offlaner, and then letting SVG and. 1437 roam as they please. They consistently try to win three lanes, and sometimes it works, and other times it doesn't. Uh, Beastmaster band, um, Medusa band, Medu Medusa definitely one of NB's uh, top picks. They they really like it for team fights. Um, MSS arguably the best Beastmaster, therefore you ban that. Um, I would I'm not sure what they're going to pick for MSS, but I'd like to see a Sardar from SVG. I feel like that's one of his best heroes. They're definitely lacking lockdown and initiation a bit, so I'd like to see it as an opener. Yeah, Sardar could work really well, especially with the Dazzle. Definitely want some more lockdown. That's really good with both Ursa and Dazzle. I like it a lot. They could Roche insanely fast with it. I wonder what Liquid will go after up against Ursa. Crystal Maiden wasn't a bad ban. I feel like they might have definitely gone for that. It, the Crystal Maiden actually works pretty well with the Monkey King. Just in terms of like giving him mana as he kind of just like leaves from tree to tree. That's true. And Frostbite's quite good against Ursa Dazzle, I'd say. 
For sure. Yeah, lots of magic damage to kind of ignore the amount of positive armor Dazzle's giving his teammates. And the slow, too. Just to, if, if somebody gets graved, it doesn't really matter. It's like you just keep them in place for five more seconds and then they die. Yeah, they just tick out at the end. I saw, I think it was Invo or I think it was Miracle huh. the other day when he was playing Sand King and he, somebody was, you know, somebody graved or somebody was graved and he yules them. Yeah. And then when he came down, the grave was over and he just died from like the, the small the, amount the of damage. The 50 damage. Yeah, yeah, the 50 damage. I was like, oh, that was that was pretty smart. Yeah, that's a cool Connell. So the Connell for uh, Liquid uh, this time around, which is interesting because uh, many of the teams have used him as a, a Monkey King counter. Oh. I, I like it a lot here because NP has no push, lane push right now. I mean, Dazzle can do it a little bit, but nothing super effective. So Ooh. Connell just pushes out lanes and it's going to be a little bit hard for NP to take fights. So. Yeah. We do get a little bit of something different from MP. It's a right, MSS here. It's uh, really good against Monkey King, actually. Um, you can uh, get vision with your rocket. You can hook shot into trees, battery salt cogs, so you can definitely kill him in there. That's right. The rocket could be nice. Although, can you can you just use your tree leap thing? Is that like Out of if cult? it gets interrupted, you'll still go anyways, right? Because it's a channel. So technically, if you're if you're able to cast it at all, you should be able to. So you're saying if out. he's like on top of the tree? Yeah, and you like hook shot him. Battery salt cog kind of a thing. Uh, I I don't know. Mm. Or, or if you take player damage, do you just fall out of the tree? I can't remember. Mm, I don't I, think. I, I think you can take damage while on the tree. It's only if the tree yeah. gets cut down. Okay. Then you fall. So you do it with a quelling blade. Is what you're trying to say. Anti mage. Oh. Uh. It's a hero to be played up against Naga. Ooh, Naga caught all game. <laughs> Casters, you you look excited. <laughs> Happy birthday, Odie Pixel. I, I, We're going to give you a nice think, little Coddle yeah. Naga to end the day. What, what a great birthday present. Uh, anti Mage will solve some of their split push problems that they're, they're having trouble pushing lanes. Um, Liquid doesn't have the best lockdown. I guess uh, Ensnare is good. Mana League can be good. Duel is good. But NP is doing NP. like this dual core. Like You see these, they pick like two carries, and you think, oh, they should really only have one of these, and then yeah. the other one should be a mid hero or like a more traditional mid. Yeah. But here we go. Anti Mage Ursa, they've done Life Stealer well, Life Stealer Spectre the other time. Mm -hmm. um, just last series they did Life Stealer and Weaver. Weaver. Weaver last time, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I feel like uh, NP's last pick it's just gonna be a fighting hero and they're just gonna four man with like Ursa Clock, Dazzle, Slar, and try to take really good fights. And I feel like it's decent for that. I feel like their lineup's okay. We'll see. I'm interested to see how they do. With the anti mage, I, I'm not a, I'm not a big believer in that hero right now at all. Would you say it's good against Naga? Yeah, I mean that's yeah that's like maybe it can work against Naga, but still a stretch I think. Hmm. So we're looking for an SVG hero from NP. Still could do the Slardar. I, but I feel like it's dangerous against Naga because she'll just sleep and then all of a sudden your Slardar is like yeah. It would dead. be nice to have something to help with Naga. They could do Lion. Yeah. For the respawn talent. The respawn talent and you can <laughs> kill the illusions. We That's have true. had a, a, a Lion picked, Hex. by the way. It's not I'm yeah. underrated hero, man. I only picked it once. Give so Lion far. some love. I guess I kind of like it here because they're definitely lacking actual lockdown. Battery still won't cut it. And I've, I've seen him play it before, whether it was like in a scrim or a match or something. Isn't it, uh, I would say it's kind of bad, really bad against Monkey King, though. Low HP, low armor, if you get initiated on, you just kind of die. Sure, but that's that's Lion in every game. You know, he, if he gets initiated on, he kind of dies. But he Didn't just kind of... just spawn back? Yeah, short respawn. Yeah. But also, <laughs> like, well, Lion's a hero that's very easy to commit on. You know, you get a Blink Dagger, and you just blink in, stun, and alt, and then odds are you, you know, you you hex someone too, and then maybe you die. Yeah. But then you have a short respawn. Yeah. You come back in with another stun. By the time, by the time you respawn and TP back in, your stun and hex are off cooldown again. Yeah. So you're, you're set to go. It would definitely make Ursa a lot stronger this game for what they need to do, which is pressure. So they can't just put it all on clockwork. Yeah, and they need they need control with Dazzle. Like they can't just do like Dazzle and something else. They they might just default to their like classic Slardar, but. I feel like it is a little underwhelming in a game like what this. What about Shadow Demon? Um, I don't. I don't like it either. I think maybe they need something to find the call. They could do Bounty Hunter, Earth Spirit. One of those. Uh, I like Earth Spirit. It sounds pretty good. Sand King. Okay. It's a stun. Yeah. Yeah. It's something. It's team fight too. <laughs> it can work. We'll see. I mean, it's. It, 
it definitely fits in that kind of hero pool that we thought maybe they would go for. It's, a, it's also a really good lane pusher, which is one of the better things about Sand King here over a lot of the other things we've said. That's true. Because it's basically just Anti-Mage and Sand King that can push really well. The others are okay. Although Clockwork Dazzle. Rocket offsets a lot of that, if you, especially if you get that. that Dazzle perk. is okay too. Yeah, he's good with the new the, with the heal. It's just less safe, I'd say. For sure. Have you uh, gotten that? Have you played Clockwork with the new Rocket Flare damage perk? It's pretty good. It's like plus seventy five. Actually, feels really good for pushing that. I feel like that'll solve a lot of the issue. Maybe oh, definitely it. help. Last five seconds then. Let a liquid go for pick number five. They go live still. It's uh, fairly. Liquid Miracle Monkey style. King? Miracle Monkey King? Who is it? GH Naga? Who knows? I'm, I was yeah, who I knows that game. now? That's I think thing. it's possible. He Miracle played Monkey King earlier today, I think. Yeah, and he played Sand King support yesterday. Yeah, for sure. So, so he's definitely mixing things up. Miracle's the new four player. Yeah. I'm on board. Make this will be work. fun to watch. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks very much, uh, PPD and Purge. Time to send you over to our commentary team and say happy birthday. Welcome to the mainstream, Odie Pixel. Thank you, absolutely, Paul. Uh, feels birthday, man, indeed. But we're ready for this very important game. You know, getting that decision, getting that third place is huge for these two teams. Liquid MP, we've seen the drafts. We're, of course, waiting to see who is going to be playing the Monkey King. As the panel mentioned, yep. we did see earlier today a Miracle Monkey King, and it was very, very effective. That game in the mid lane had a lot of buffs going his way in power, battle trance. This game looking more like the support Monkey King with the Naga. But hey, last time they played Nagas, P PPD mentioned it was GH playing it, so we'll find out soon enough. I'm curious to see what Liquid have up their sleeves. NP, classic, Eternal MV anti-mage, he loves the hero, loves playing it. It's a good way, I mean, it's a good kind of carry. You match Greed with Greed, Naga versus AM, you know, it's it's the right kind of carry you want to have in a, in a Naga Siren game. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what they, they do do with the lanes. I mean, do you reckon it's going to be Envy taking the anti-mage mid, or will it be the <sighs> Ursa in the mid lane? Because we've seen... Envy does sometimes queue up for an old pub, and he, br he brings that anti <laughs> straight to that mid lane. Much to his teammates' pleasure, I've heard. But uh, more likely safe lane, I'd say. I feel like the lane's okay. going to be a bit more favorable for him. If he's mid, he's going to need perhaps a bit of help. The Ursa is more of a natural mid lane. It has the Ursa shock. He can spam, can go for the bottle, can do a bit more with that. But uh, we'll, looks like we'll find out. Players have loaded we in. We have got the Miracle Monkey King, just in case you were Naga. wondering at home. Kornaga, too. It is, yeah. So GH going to the safe lane. Miracle playing at mid. We saw, if you didn't again see the series earlier with uh, um, Liquid playing, Miracle went mid against a Juggernaut. Mm -hmm. This time, as you say, most likely it will be Owie heading to the mid lane yeah. on a, on the Ursa. You feel more likely than... Just, I mean, Envy anti-mage. I mean, you've got that blink... You, uh, you know, you can stop him from getting the stacks up. Check it's some items. A AUI's got the poor man's shield, okay. so he's, he's headed mid he's by the, the looks okay. of things. He's got the mid items, so... Or could he be heading up to the top lane to contest the Lifestealer's farm in some sort of landing situation? Unlikely. He's got a salve and a pull yeah. tango. I feel like if you're going off lane, you go poor man's shield with a full set of tangos, but who knows? He's got a salve. He's still got regen, so... Uh, looks like uh, they're going to get things back underway. AUI just had to fix some screen issue, but... Things are all good and dandy now. As we get ourselves into this match, Liquid versus NP again. Essentially, essentially this uh, game three of a best of three. We had the first two yesterday, but we're back here in a return for the final episode between these two teams to see who's able to come out on top. I mean, uh, again, uh, it's just overall draft impressions, gods. Do you believe in in NP's finishing up with with this anti mage sanking? Or are you, uh, are you scared on behalf of them because of Liquid's kind of draft? We know that they can execute this. We've seen them do exactly this already this night. I think it's always hard to read NP's drafts because they do run these dual carry lineups. They don't really, they don't pick traditional mid heroes. They're always running these mid Ursas, mid Weavers, mid Medusas. They're not really running classic mids that you'd expect to see. Uh, and that's where it's like, it's hard to really understand how they, their, their drafts are going to work sometimes. SVG is he? Okay, he's not going to commit for it. Roman Clock, he's been playing this four position clock. One of his probably two or three heroes we've seen from this. We've seen the Earth Spirit, we've seen the Clock, the Slada, and probably you could also see the uh, the Legion. That's uh, not Legion, the uh, what do we call it? Elder Titan. But uh, he's definitely had some experience playing the Clock. The battle begins. All right, so already we're, we're starting to see the lanes come to fruition. MSS will be down here on the Sand King. And uh, indeed, it is going to be uh, some sort of aggressive laning coming out. As as you mentioned, not Aoi. Aoi indeed is heading towards the mid. But Envy will be up top on that anti-mage, backed up by the moment 
by, uh, of course, 1437 and SVG on the Dazzle Clock combination. Miracle starting to, to search around towards the mid, maybe wandering for a, a courier <laughs> sniper or search. We'll see what sort of Monkey King plays this man will look for. Turned himself in a tree just to get across between the two towers. Doesn't I don't think he was really looking for a curry. He just wanted to get to the top side of the map without being spotted. So he wants to go and help this top dry lane. Uh, already SVG just causing issues for Kuroki, making sure that he can't get any kind of pull or control off around here. As he just blocks him off from the entrance to Kuroki's own jungle. But uh, absolutely, with Miracle turning up to this top lane, maybe they can look to try and turn this around and make sure that MP don't have the control and the advantage. Here comes the pounce. Uh, SVG already falling low. Ooh. SVG may have just gotten baited. He thinks, in his if he hasn't seen Monkey King, he thinks he's got this kill. He's, yeah, but he's going to hear the sound, isn't he? Oh, yeah. He'll hear the he primal spring. Has he heard it already, I wonder? I'm not sure exactly when the ta the the sound, like... I think he plays, like, audible. when you cuss, it's like the... So he's already hit, like, the... Yeah, but he's not he's, hit the middle. He's channeling as we speak, so... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, look at him, he's like, um... Ah, uh, it's awkward. I love how he freezes, but the eyes still move. Yeah, right? that's, that's the great That's my bit. favorite yeah. thing about pauses, is how here is like, their on. eyes move around. <laughs> I've got to trim my face. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. All right, SVG. This is looking like a tough spot for him to get out of. And bam. There we go. He has got the battery assault. So that's going to cause some issues for the chase down. But yeah, with the Orb of Venom on Miracle, they've got the slow. One more swipe with the stick will do it. And Miracle picks himself up first blood as he makes himself apparent in the top lane. Good bait. Knew what was coming their way, and Kuro kind of laid the trap, and this top lane is the focus for now for Team Liquid. Well, a bit of the old Kale here. I blame Kuroki and the blinding light. And we have up top, Envy, getting in and personal with Matumba Man. Trading hits, CS-wise at the moment, 5 for 1 on the Anti-Mage, 3 for 1 on Matumba, early days, but Envy already getting some, some farm indeed up on top. Mid lane, GH. He's doing a fair bit of harassment, but now he's got a... Well, that second level, nearly onto level three, you're able to force Aoi back and get him to use that salve. But Aoi coming out on top with CS at the moment there. And the bottom lane matchup, so this 1v1 top lane, actually, yeah, just hold a moment. It's 1 4 3 7. Will have to TP out, does get away. And V as well. He's been left alone. Will trade hits as best he can with the poor man shield. This will burn Miracle's mana, but still looking like a tough lane for him to maintain farm. He may have gotten CS for the first couple of yeah. minutes, but whether that will continue is a, a whole other matter. They don't really necessarily want to maintain an aggro tri lane. Clockwork wants to find some levels around the map and also perhaps go and harass the mid Naga. So it's going to be, if you if you take that approach, then Anti-Mage does get left in like a dual lane, which is where he's not going to farm. So it's kind of like, a, there's downsides either way. Either Anti-Mage doesn't get a lot of farm if Clock roams or if Clock aggro tri lanes, then Clock is not getting the XP you, you typically hope to get on this hero. Uh, we can see down uh, on that bottom lane and that 1v1 for the time being. MSS is nearly getting himself a first player. In fact, with the Caustic finale there, Mind Control is going to pop. MSS, I mean, this man has been having some incredible performances uh, this LAN. And uh, wow, what a way for, for him to start the game off there. Getting a solo kill against the Legion Commander. Mind Control is going to be a bit peed off by that. But he, he does have backup of Miracle. They could look to try and... Do something in return, but again, it's hard with the Burrow Strike escape potential. Here's the first nuke. Trying to try and whittle him down low before Miracle jumps in. In fact, with the oh, props there now stun. that the Burrow Strike's used, this is the time to jump down. Miracle will hit the Boundless Strike. Didn't actually get the initial slow on anything with the Primal Spring. So MSS should be able to continue to get away. Mind Control will have another nuke in a bit. I don't know if it's going to be enough damage. It has got the two points in it. In fact, a right click and a nuke should do it. He's got to get in range for it. Oh, he misses the nuke. Oh, Mind Control. Oversteps the mark there, and with that, he's not getting the kill. MSS, he's going to survive. Not normally a skill that we see being missed, gods. No, and the Primal Spring, definitely one of the spells you do yeah. sometimes I miss as a skill shot. But I mean, I, I guess he was anticipating a Burrow Strike. Yeah. He was and trying he just to play got around the mana that, for the Burrow Strike, yeah. too. MSS yeah. managed to buy enough time that he had the mana. They wasn't in too much danger once he had the mana for it, so nicely played. He's going to go aggressive. Monkey King could be in trouble here. The Caustic Finale is not saying he really wants to fight, and with no points in Jingu, Miracle does not he's, win this 1v1. He's got one boundless strike, but yeah, level one. It's not going to have the stun duration really to hold him back too much. And MSS chomps on the Mango, and he chomps on the Monkey King. MSS already picking up a lot of positive action in that bottom lane. Meanwhile, mid, AUI going aggressive. Yeah, with the wraparound as well from SVG. GH, he may be out of answers. Miracle's come in. 
Boundless Truck, I believe, is still unavailable, and now he's going to be allowed to get the kill. Tries to get the aggro over, isn't going to work, so we'll lose his life in return. Miracle, looking to build up the Jinji Mastery stacks. He's got it up, jumps onto the tree with a Primal Spring, closes the gap, couple more snaps. We'll take it as Miracle does manage to clean up a double kill in return. Nice retaliation kills. SVG slightly missed the cogs. He was trying to push the Naga back into the Ursa. But ended up that GH just kind of ran to the south, not into the cogs, uh, which meant that SVG's rotation didn't really... I mean, it did f kind of tunnel the uh, the Naga a certain direction, which meant AUI could guarantee the kill, but it didn't really... Uh, it meant AUI took a lot of damage, got ripped tight under the tower, tanked the tower shot, so didn't ultimately help him all too much. Oh, wow, well, he's a bit a little careful. DD rune. Miracle bottom lane again, though. MSS and 1437 bringing mind control down low. MSS... I'm going to have a burrow strike in a couple of seconds, yeah. but doesn't want to dive too deep. The Miracle back, hiding oh, off the map. You never know where he's going to be. Yeah, this is looking like a very well laid out laning stage by Team NP. Here we go, mid lane. I'm going to make a go here. Is the double damage rune enough? It looks like it should be with the boundless strike as well. One more touch will bring down Aoi, but Miracle, ooh, he does get it. But again, we're seeing these trades. 1437 comes in and will be able to punish Miracle in return. I think we said enough time for a grave there, I want to say, but... AUI does go down and Miracle trades his life but gets the kill on the way out. Miracle phase boots up already, uh, hitting pretty decent timing on some of his levels and being very proactive. But Anti Mage is kind of free farmed in the offlane. This is, I think, the uh, probably the biggest positive of this MP laning set is that they've managed. I mean, you'd expect the Sanking to win his 1v1 against the Legion, melee on melee. The Earth has done well mid against Naga without winning the lane, but Anti Mage with. Minimal help. Dazzle was definitely up there in Clockwork early on, but lately it's kind of just been him up there by himself. Has managed to out CS the Life Sealer and kind of keep himself towards the top. So really, really good lane stage for Eternal Envy. He's now going to fall back into the jungle with an Iron Talon, plus the Quelling Blade, going for the the double jungle farming items. He's uh, happier just to get what farm he can there. Top lane, Matuma Man. Going to go on to 1437. Should be fine as he does still have the Grave. Deep will be able to buy himself the time to get back to safety behind that tier one. And uh, I think similarly for Liquid side, they decide it's time to send their carry into the jungle, farm faster there and farm in a, a kind of safer way. GH is going to be jungle farming, giving the mid lane to Miracle. So two benefits there. Your carry's farming somewhere safer and you give the XP and farm in a, a different lane to us. A, a support kind of, a sort of pseudo support in the Monkey King who can make use of uh, getting an early level six. Bottom lane again, MSS trying for the harassment we're there with the Burrow Strike. Unable to get the connection. And they look for a, an a opportunity to get a kill as they're bringing him back up, but at the same time, so is Liquid. They have Miracle back in the neighborhood, but they, the numbers advantage at the moment on the side of MP. Three heroes ready to look for some sort of a play. Mind Control will be the target. They know Miracle's down here too with their ward. Problem is, if Miracle hits level 6 for this fight, he's very close to breaking that XP gap, but he may not even need it. Just going to open straight up with a boundless strike on the jewel. There's nothing that MP could do quick enough to stop it. Mind Control gets the success. Now we'll be chased down, but Miracle's just hit 6 as well with that kill. Lays down the Wukong's command. The Illusion's bringing SVG down low. 1437 gets the grave out in time, though, and SVG will just be able to get himself back to safety. That was such a quick heads-up play from Miracle and Mind Control. MSS thinks he's safe. He knows he's got three heroes there. He's got a Dazzle, but Dazzle was over in the trees, and that level one Grave cast range is only 550, so unable to help his buddy out. Oh, that's a and we go. wonderful Ursa route. With the haste and such, they'll take it. The same time, though, down on the bottom lane, MSS came back in, and with the help of 1437, they were able to punish Mind Control, who'd been left alone as Miracle had already headed over towards the mid. Probably a bit of a slip up by Mind Control. Lurk, lurking around to the tower when Sankings respawned and TP'd in, not something that should really happen, but yeah, AUI, best rune you can find really as a nurse early on, getting a haste rune, finds a free kill for himself, but the ward which scouted out the Coddle will be dewarded now. It's GH, 1600 gold, see how, how quickly a relic timing he can get. So far, so good for the Naga Siren. So they're gonna try and form a defense here in this middle lane, but Timmerman TPing across, they will keep the tower alive and uh, we'll be able to get that deny. And shutting down some of the potential money that MP were looking for with that group up, but this is space created essentially up top. You know, with Matumba coming down to the mid, MV continues to get more and more space uh, to continue to just have this solo lane farm as the anti-mage. Absolutely, and the anti-mage on par with Naga for net worth for the time being, and if you get a battle fury around when Naga 
is going to be looking at a Radiance. I mean, ideally before the Radiance, you're looking absolutely fantastic. Although given that he did, didn't have the free farm safe lane, did go for the other items, the Treads, Poor Man Shield Eye and Talon. It won't be that incredibly fast, like 11, 12 minute Battle Fury this game. Bottom lane, Miracle, once again, teaming up with Mind Control. There's a big stack here they want to farm, which may get contested. And MP wants a fight though. They're coming across with a smoke as well. They're going to try and do their best to get Liquid's hands off this. 37 there. There'll be the Boundless Strike from Miracle to hold back two of them. Jumps away. Owie coming around with the cutoff, but he's going to see the, the bigger target as Mind Control has been spotted out by 1437, being chased down by four members of MP. Now it's got those phase boots, but here comes the TP across to block him off. Owie cuts the gap and will be able to continue to chase. They need to get SVG in range though with a battery assault or MSS to hit the burrow, but he doesn't. Mind Control throws down the nuke, trying to move away with the movement speed. It's not going to happen. NP will finally take down the kill. Quite the big chase. They did take that triple neutral stack on the side of Liquid, but don't really feel like that's... I mean, you are killing a core hero for NP, but considering the time investment, considering that Lifestealer and Naga were off farming and you also lost that, that stack, I don't really see it as a, a big win by any means. Miracle poised to strike once again as the Wukong command. Thinking about making... A bit of a play, especially with Mind Control back in this bottom lane. Just keeping eyes on 1437, but as they can see, yeah, with the jumps between the trees and the, the creeps give the vision in between, they know that he's there. The ping's out there from the Dazzle as 1437 heads back to base. SVG keeping himself hidden under the tower. Would certainly love to try and find that level 6. Still a little, it feels just a little under leveled in comparison to where SVG would hope to be at this stage as he is just still sitting at level 4 and in fact he's in trouble as well as they close straight in with Mind Control. The cogs do help him survive for a little bit making sure at least the dual damage won't go the way of Mind Control but they do still manage to clean up the clock. Kill nonetheless and an objective to follow with numbers down in the bottom lane Liquid will get the tier 1 tower. Response from NP not visible for now. They're very close to completing the Blink Dagger on AUI's Ursa. They ideally want to get that level 6 on Clockwork. Not sure if they've bought or used the, the Tomb yet. Dazzle's level 6.5. I wonder if he actually took it. I feel like the Clockwork's the key hero to, to get that Tomb on. Uh, they, buy, they buy it now. Dazzle buys it, and I'm pretty sure that's going to go the way of the Clockwork. His level 6 is the, the key timer right now. Yeah. Yeah. Especially what we've seen uh, SVG be able to do with it in the past. Can pull out some incredible plays. Miracle. Put the life stealer inside him. TP out. He's not spotted down here. He's going to be safe there with that play. Miracle, interesting enough as well, worth noting. This is a Monkey King looking for that Monkey Midas Gods. Okay. Uh, it's just a uh, Midas, I feel, as, as a four or five position support is always a good item if you can get it at a reasonable time. By reasonable, I mean like by 20 minutes, even by 25 minutes, this item typically pays for itself. Uh, in the long run, it just means you're not buying a four staff or something instead, which, yeah, there is a trade off, but you will ultimately guarantee further late game iron progression. You're in a game with a Naga and Anti Mage. Oh, well You've got to expect the long game. And with this play as well, you know, they reveal themselves down bottom, so MP knows it's safe for Roche. And with Valley heading in, have the Arcane Rune as well to help just speed it up with the overpower spam. Yep. And uh, easy Aegis there for MP. You can see Liquid, they were trying to find this tier two in response, but only getting about a third of the damage done. So MP coming out on top there with that, that objective. See what they can get done with this. They haven't got the Sanking Blink yet, but with a Hookshot, Ursa Blink, I feel like that's more than enough to start looking to contest some of this Liquid Greed. They're pushing very deep in this bottom lane, really getting the wave close to the tower, all while Naga farms. Like this is, very, this is a push and a group up down bottom very much geared just to create space for Naga Siren. So MP, oh. SVG look to be in trouble. He's got the battery, so it's not going to do a hell of a lot of good against that raged up Matumba man. I feel like you either need to address the Naga farming or you need to fight Liquid at the bottom lane. Because right now this 4-1 Liquid split, split where the four heroes are kind of fighting and pushing bottom, creating space. And now they Top the lane, the perfect jump. Envy, who has been having a, a pretty easy PvE game so far, suddenly gets met by the full force of Liquid in his face. He was just at the Battle Fury Gold 2, who's now 300 gold short of it. Rough time for him to die, and perhaps partly why he got a little bit too greedy pushing up deep there. And Legion Commander's Blink, I think, was the reveal. Hadn't been scouted yet by NP, so he wasn't expecting a Blink initiation to actually be able to catch him out. So far, those things continue. You know, GH 
still remaining at the top of that net worth. Absolutely getting the farm that he needs. There's just been no real contest for him over in his side of the map. He's just, o just un over 100 away from having that completed Radiance at a very, very respectable time in this game. And I mean, MP's lineup, you know, as mentioned, the anti-mage, if he can keep on par MV, they do have uh, a sense of a solution for a, a scale, you know, late game Naga. But it's it's it, it just feels like it's never really the plan to let an Naga sign have this good of a start. Yep. And I think this is often one of the maybe issues that MP run into is they do play at a pretty Radiant slow pace. They've got themselves attack. level six on Clockwork. They've got Blink Aegis on Ursa. This is typically where you would have smoked the second that happened. Like you should be looking for fights, and it's been what two, yeah, roughly two minutes since they picked up Aegis, and it doesn't really feel like NP's made any aggressive moves during the two minutes since they picked up Aegis. Liquid were pressuring bottom lane. They found a kill on the Clockwork, and they've been farming up their Naga Siren while they've been pressuring the lanes. I, I don't feel like NP are pressuring lanes. They're not really seeking out kills. They do so yeah. now. They've just this smoked now, but yeah. it just feels like slow it feels like oh we should have been do like they're probably thinking their heads like oh we should be smoking we've aegis blink but they should have immediately done this it shouldn't have to have been like a like a solution to what's been going on here let's see what they can find with it yep. i mean the question is who do they catch out i mean getting gh now would be very nice he is still as i said a, a, that's a very small amount of gold away from the completed radiance but it is definitely a hard kill to find. Very deep on his own half of the map at the moment. See, two of the key space creating playmakers so far for this game. Two of the main killer involved players. Sanking doing very well in his lane against Legion, but Miracle's been the, the more active one roaming around as per his role this game. Not most games, you don't really expect him in the fall, but showing some incredible versatility. And. This is one of those, I think this, like, games, teams like Liquid and games like this is really where a testament to, like, where playing lots of pubs is a good thing because you have players like Miracle who can just pick up a four-position support because a lot of these guys, like, they're, yeah. I mean, they're very high MMR, play tons of pubs, and you're not always playing mid. Miracle isn't playing mid 100% of his pub games, maybe, like, 60, 70, 80%, but there are games where he ends up on a support where he, he gets some player on his team, like, no one, let's say, from VP who's like, I'm playing mid, I'm going mid Shadow Fiend, and Miracle has to play support or has to play four-position, so... Pubs give you this big bit of extra flexibility. <laughs> do you see that? We, we, were, we were waiting essentially for nothing there. But to, they called G, um, and then I was like, oh, sorry, I didn't see. Oh, but it looks like it, it doesn't matter nonetheless, as we are still having some issues on, on the side of Liquid. Envy up top has TP'd into a tricky spot. He's only a lead. Legion can't really solo kill him. Huh. Without Blade Mail, it's tricky to get this solo kill, but two points and press the attack, two in Moment of Courage. If you use a nuke, and nuke first with the press the attack, it may be close. We'll see. That's definitely a, a borderline kill for the Legion Commander if Envy isn't aware of his presence. And you get the nuke like on the full creep wave, for example. But bottom lane, the hunt is on. Monkey King is the perfect hero to scout out smoke ganks and also escape them. Mm -hmm. Depending how on point clockwork will be with his rocket flare and scouting and hook shot. And you saw that envy with the with the ping outs as well. It was just it looked like he was just indicating his team to be very careful about this high ground that they're gonna be going past over the dire side just towards the side. Yep. Where they it could potentially be dangerous. We can see the vision not too great for MP over Liquid's half of the map, but vice versa. Um it's it, it's it's pretty insane. You know, Liquid have Three deep wards, and very, very good idea of what what's going on over MP side. And I got to look at those sentry placements, gods. I'm seeing a line of three sentries oh, that just are outside of essentially the radius of that observer. It's too busy admiring the uh, the platinum Roshan of <laughs> Team MP. Is it Owie's? I think it's. I believe so. I, Owie has one. Owie I has one. Well, uh, MSS maybe yeah. has one too. I know yeah. they they had a stack that won that event. That did the event. Yeah. Yeah. Got these rare items. Oh, Monkey King always brings Hello, it. <laughs> Miracle will take uh, that one, they say, and a hook shot to the backside and a bring down. Oh, owie. You know, I mean, in my head, like, watching, like, oh, Monkey King, perfect hero, sits on the tree, scouts up the smoke, runs away. Well, he obviously doesn't know their smoke. He doesn't see what we see and was just thinking he could get himself some farm and yeah. NP were ready to strike. I mean, on the plus, of course, it, it is that position four, so you, you're essentially throwing your life away. Yeah, you're protecting others, Trap. even though inadvertently. Dazzle's there, though. Top lane, the grave indeed. Can they get Owie out? I mean, Envy back safety, and indeed they can. 
Link will be there. No sort of control from Liquid to follow through the duel. And that is his Battle Fury done. Yep. So as good as the Radiance time is going to be from GH, the uh, Battle Fury as well on MV 15 minutes in, uh, absolutely perfect. Yep. He's even got a Shrine to use in about five seconds time, so he'll probably stick around this top lane and jungle and maintain some little farm. Oh, no, he's going to blink away. Doesn't want to do that. And uh, bottom lane again, Liquid constantly pressuring the lanes. Even just Coddle alone has been very active down here. But Already the fun beginning with this Radiance Naga. We have the Illusion just whittling SVG down and Miracle and Kuroki coming for the finish here. MSS will be there with the return with the Power Strike and the Epicenter. He'll be able to get himself a solo kill onto Miracle. And Howie blinking forward, seeing if he can find more, but Kuroki's already out to safety into the trees and does have that TP scroll. So. Yep. Just the one for one there between the two supports. Yeah, both teams losing yeah, their full position, but... And I guess you look at both teams while well, they're both creating space. Anti-Mage is getting his farm and room on MP side, Naga getting his on the Dio side, so pretty even. And pretty much the same game plan for both teams, where you're looking to create space for that big late game carry. Uh, Ursa being the fighting carry that MP have, Lifesteal on the Liquid side, very, very similar strategies from these two teams. Talking about the Lifestealer inside mind control, Matumba Matt. Ready to see if they can try and make a play. Top lane. Envy will reveal himself, but once again, 1437 is prepared. Sat there behind him. Three points in the grave, so has that fantastic range now to, to be able to save Envy from a distance. And Envy actually just keeping it safe. Not lo looking to push that wave out any further than the top left corner. And uh, make sure that he doesn't get caught out by this potential dual infest combination. Yeah, I think at this point, Liquid may not be as proactive in trying to find those picks now that they've seen what happens like with the, the great backup. Bottom lane here, a perfect pick for MP That's as GH comes out a little bit too far with the Naga. Right down on the bottom half. He did have well, he had mind control of Matuma Mana Kuroki on the way, but MP would just have to jump in quick enough. Miracle trying to get the Wukong's command out, but the battery assault just cancelling the cast animation. As MP pick a second, down bottom, they're not done yet. Aoi looking for the run down onto mind control, and MP with the ultimate will take it. Matuma Man goes for the raise TP out, but Liquid, they've already lost three. MP, can they chase for more? Kuroki are looking to be a little too speedy there with the Tranquil Boots. Will get himself out to safety. But Liquid come down and deep onto MP's half of the map, and they get heavily punished with three deaths. Yeah, really. And that's what MP need. Just they need to be the ones being proactive, going out, finding the kills, and setting themselves up. And I think Liquid themselves, as mentioned, like they can't quite be as proactive themselves. Anytime they're going for these AM kills, the grave saves have been there. So they've got to kind of play around the fact that Legion Commander can't as easily find pickoffs due to the defensive capabilities of NP's lineup. But problem is when you're not showing yourself, when you're not making moves, you're just setting, you're giving, letting NP control the tempo. And NP with a nice rotation, find the Naga, bring GH down and set GH back a little bit. NP overtakes him and is now a full thousand net worth ahead. I mean, yeah, how are we going to see, on a mathematical sense, what, who wins the farm war? There's Naga Siren with the Radiance or the, the Anti-Mage with the Battle Fury? Uh, it's not slightly Naga favored. You can farm three lanes. You've got illusions, at least later on. Like, yeah, okay. the more items you it's get, the more Naga okay. wins it. AM, he's really fast at farming, like with the Battle Fury timing. And if you really want to speed it up, you go Vlad's. But I don't think you want to necessarily look at. You want to look look at how what your six slotted items are. So he'll go for the, the Manta first. Um, but Naga, like with Manta, Radiance, Octarine is like the king of farming. No one matches like the six slotted. No, well, not even six slotted. That's like the three four slotted Naga Siren. But uh, I don't think it, for anti mage it's about when you hit your peaks in strength. So when you when you get your Manta Abyssal and you can kill almost any here on the map, you blink in Abyssal with your Manta, you can kill a Naga, you can kill a Life Sealer. If you burn enough mana and set that mana void, you're incredibly powerful. So that's something where Naga is not really looking to fight with her farm. She's looking to split push, keep lanes out, and use the the lane equilibrium for like strategic benefit, where it can set up kills with the infest ganks. Mm -hmm. Whereas Anti-Mage is looking to use his farm just to straight up fight. Absolutely. And Liquid do need to make these infest ganks work. You can see already on the net worth, but Tumor Man's starting to fall slightly behind in comparison to the other cores in this game. You really need Mind Control and Kuroki to be able to, to get the initiation to make something happen. But MP, they've got four grouped up towards the top. In fact, the full five, they're, they're keeping themselves very much around Envy. As yeah, Liquid with this movement again, uh, we saw them get a, a very big uh, kind of kickoff with the first Blink Duel. Uh, ever since, it's been quite hard for Mind Control to find an actual opening and chance in MP's lineup to, to get that pickoff. It's like Liquid is going to fall back and play 
and they've been playing a greedy farm orange. Ooh, okay, they managed to get the jump in immediately Very onto big. the back, and they do. They get the dazzle. Great way to start the fight. Mind control heads back. Miracle from the tree line throws down the Wukong's command. They've taken down Aoi as well. This is exactly what Liquid were waiting for. This sort of an engagement where they can get the great way to start it and the fantastic way to continue for even more. GH with the song. Trying to set up and allow Matumba Man to get in close, but MSS actually with a very nice burrow strike. Looked like he went down to the bottom, but he came back up to the top and that fooled the whole of Liquid. They were down to the bottom of the cliff searching. But MSS, again, up to the high ground. Can they catch him this time, Liquid? They're searching. MSS will try for the TP out. He's not going to make it, though. The damage of Miracle with the Jinju Mastery is much too much, and Liquid will end up getting that third kill. Miracle just on top of him. Uh, constantly, wherever he he tried to juke to, Miracle was one step ahead and chased him down. Ward Vision playing the big part there. It's dewarded now, but that ward on that cliff behind the tier 2 bottom tower was what set up the pick on the Dazzle. They completely ignore the Ursa they run into. They know Julie, anyone other than Dazzle is going to lead to a grave save. That Ursa can, or Anti-Mage can then flick out after the grave save, and the, the fight gets, the gank is wasted and it gets turned around on you. So they find the Dazzle, and once Dazzle's dead, Ursa becomes a, a much more feasible kill to take. Oh, they're searching for Envy, though. But he will blink himself right to the corner. They do ping. They know the rough area. Miracle hopping across. It's just a little too late as Envy very, very quickly gets himself out. He's still ahead of the, the Naga for now. He'll likely remain the case, barring some deaths on him or kills going Naga's way for at least a little bit longer. But Coddle really enables this Naga to just deal with split push, go back and farm, and then also get pulled into fight. Definitely a very frustrating combo to try and deal with. Liquid get themselves the tier one on the top lane. All tier ones taken by themselves. MP still yet to take the bottom tier one. And uh, Roshan very soon to be back up. And MP, of course, will certainly want to go for it. But now you know, it is going to get scarier. Liquid have a lot of ways to fight around that pit with the Song and Siren and such. It seems like they're not going to try and defend Towers MP. They don't like the position they're in. The Dire Vision is really good, whereas Radiant have no vision around the top area of the map. And that was the key last time for Liquid. You come in to try and contest this, this Dire Ward is very likely to scout the Dazzle, and anytime Dazzle is not in fog, he's getting jumped. He's going down very early on in the fight. As we saw STPs. They could Song to set this one up. Let's have a look. Owie. Just at the DD. Could be a little bit of a threat if things don't go according to plan for Liquid in terms of the jump in. He's burned all his mana though. Miracle on the front lines. He'll spot 1437. That's who you want to find first. Who's going to try and TP out the Bandless Strike? Will have something to say about that. So Liquid will get one. Have a dual win as well for Mind Control. They set up Roche though. AUI TPs in with a double. Oh, double damage going to wear off. He's got Deso. And he'll scatter it out, so instantly into the Roche pit. And the problem is Liquid just old mass TP bottom, so they, uh, I don't think they get there in time. Wow, well, they've got to Roche take the long walk. Roche dies too fast to an Ursa. Sanking's going to come in and tank it to try and prevent AUI from getting bashed. This is a, a nice little efficiency play. A single yeah, bash can stop Roche. They can, but yeah, the Ursa's too, too much damage with the Deso oh, and such. They also left. get out of range, yeah. They will almost certainly lose SVG, who's been left for dead. But the rest are out. They get that Aegis, they get that Roche, and... Essentially losing SVG and 1437 for the Roche and the Aegis, so it's, it's worth it, I feel. Yeah, it's okay. You're losing supporting cast. Your your key heroes are staying alive. They're getting yep. key items. They're getting an Aegis. And every little bit of time management there may paid off because, yeah, the Naga pre-slept before they got to the pit to try and sleep them in the Roche. And if Sanking like, doesn't get in there, burrow into tank Roche, it's all it would have taken was perhaps yes. one Roche ba bash, yep. and Ursa's Roche would have been delayed enough that that sleep like would have caught them there. Oh, hello. Uh, the kick off. Poor old Dazzy D. That dire ward. But this time Envy actually finding right. stuff in return. He's just blown up mind control. We'll jump forward to look for Matuma Man, but he's inside Carti. And Carti will be the uh, taxi he's service back. auto denying, though. Uh, here we go, trying to bring it back. Uh, but the Naga Illusion will perhaps come and save the day a bit. Can they Can they kill this live stealer? I'll bring him more in. He'll, he'll get himself out and run away. And ooh, hook shot. It's going to be off the mark there. It's a hard one to hit with Kuro forcing Matuma Man to safety. Miracle with the Midas pickup has already gotten level 14. He's gotten pieces. Most of his bash are completed. So this will just guarantee some good late game item progression as well. On a game, it's normally very hard to maintain any level of farm when you've got a Nag on your team because she just 
Naga isn't about just your opponents not having fun. So often it's the Naga's teammates, supports particularly, who don't get to have much fun. But that's why you go Midas in these games. And Miracle will at least make sure he can get up to his Basher and perhaps a bit more. Coddle not getting all too much in the way of farm, but has picked up a point booster. Worked towards the Ag Scepter. Has the four staff already. Just the, the one nice defensive item against the Clockwork, even against the Ursa for, for kiting capabilities. And Envy is, is, is going to be even harder to catch with that Lincoln. They've, I mean, in terms of AoE control, it's it's pretty much the boundless strike and, and maybe some bashes. Other yeah. than that, they've got to make sure that they can somehow proc it and follow through. So Envy is going to be very slippery indeed. SVG a little less so. Quick jump in, they'll get him. And Envy wants to try and find something in return. Jumps forward. Sleep will be there. Epicenter was coming through as they try and get MSS into some sort of a position, but with the song still up and the TP straight up for GH, get the rest of them out of there. And it looks like Liquid will get away with just getting themselves a free jewel kill and uh, not losing anyone in return. Yeah, they're just kind of playing for the late game. Get a pick off and then get the hell out. Don't take the team fight. Even with Epicenter wasted, Liquid still did not win a team fight there. They haven't really got a team fight lineup. None of their heroes really that suited for it. What? Envy's on the search for the monkey. Okay. A bit of an unfortunate MSS pause there. Nearby. He's got a blink burrow, but they've got to find the monkey first. Oh, yeah, they've got that battle fury. He can chop down the trees <laughs> if Envy <laughs> finds where it is. And I think, yeah, he should have seen him come across that, that gap down just below where Miracle is at the moment. But it, it looks like he's heading up the stairs. Have to get so there. maybe like anticipating where he's going to jump to, but with Miracle he's seeing Envy, I mean... He's mid-jump too, so he's just about to yeah. jump somewhere new, probably to like the northwest. The direction yeah, I mean, if Envy in. gets up those, he may see them the end of the Monkey King landing into the yep. tree. He could blink, blink, battle blink fury, and battle fury. Yeah, if he guesses right on the tree. So it's mm. often hard to tell exactly which tree, but see how well he does. Or even MSS Let's may just look. blink Barra. There we go. They will see him. The boundless strike there from Miracle. Very nicely done. Holds Envy back, and that God, will actually allow Miracle to get back to safety as he heads up into the north. TP's out. That's not even a miracle. That's my, I can't believe like how short those flying, how fast this hero flies around the map with his cooldowns. 1.4 second tree dance is just crazy. Ooh, MSS tries for the burrow. Mind control just out and uh, was a little off the mark in terms of timing and angle. 13 to 16, 27 minutes in. Again, there's kind of far more between the anti mage and the Naga Siren, very even as well. You know, you look towards Matumba and Aoi, uh, they're pretty much on the same page. It's all. Feeling very even uh, at the moment in terms of uh, value and net worth, but I mean, w would you feel that there's a team that's a little happy with the situation? I mean, as we can see, the yeah, edge mathematically is liquid. Uh, and does that, that mean they're leading? I'd say so. It feels like they have a bit more late game power, and they're going to transition better, mostly because of the Monkey King. And that you, most of the net worth different. You, you talk about how Anti Major Nagari, even Ursa yeah. and Life, so different. The difference is between the four position clock and the four Monkey King. Monkey King has Midas Basher, Clockwork. 4k net worth has nothing. He's got no. So that's where the farm discrepancy is. And later this game goes, Monkey King is going to be very good at controlling Ursa in team fights with his ultimate. So I can I can definitely see Miracle transitioning well, even controlling the anti mage as well. If you get like some some bashes off in the Wukong's command, if he bl if anti mage blinks in aggressively, you drop your Wukong's, and him and his Manta illusions may get beaten down pretty damn fast. So definitely, it feels like a, a good game for Monkey King to excel. MP, once again, going for the smoke plate. We'll see what they can get here. They know that this high ground's safe with the ward already down, but not to find any members of Liquid as they're all up towards the top, and they've actually got their eyes on Envy. Mind control, wanting to make a play, but of course they need to break that Lincoln's. As Envy is quite a slippery little hero with that Manta. Since he's aware of what's and going on. Swear. Yeah, it's... It's a hard catch. They've got four heroes scanning the area, searching for him. But Envy, again, just gets out towards the top, TPs away. And as we're seeing, it's just very hard for Liquid now to catch this anti-mage. That, that Legion Commander duel they've been relying on, no longer an option with the anti-mage Lincolns. And Envy is awareness on point for now. SVG still in the neighborhood around this Monkey King. And they were searching for him. We saw that hook shot just... Miss Miracle by the skin of his teeth. He's got another rocket flare, but hasn't caught vision. Envy with his build as well has uh, has the MKB complete, so that yeah. Radiance Mist chance. 
going to mean a whole lot less than, you know, for 29 minutes in the, into the game, Envy is certainly going to be packing a punch in these fights as well. If he has the chance to get his hands on, on Liquid and you know, look at his lineup with the with the clockwork and the, the Sand King, MSS and SVG, they certainly have a lot of control and lockdown to allow Envy uh, to get the opportunity to get the damage done. There's the Octarine, so Naga kind of at the peak of her farming capabilities now. We'll be looking more towards the, the damage, team fighting items, defusals, butterflies, these kind of things now to match up against Anti Mage and Ursa. And for MP, we'll see what their next move is going to be. They get a Shadow Blade on Sand King. Again, this is the kind of item like he's playing the main catch. It feels like Clockwork, with his items and the, the vision control now, isn't able to too easily find hook shots. So just being able to sh Shadow Blade around the map to try and find some pickoffs is a, a nice way, a way to approach this game. But a lot of sentries you're walking through. It's the main thing you've got to be careful of. Well, mid. They seem. I, oh, they didn't catch Vision of Miracle here. Yeah, even with MSS moving around the oh, tree line, it looks like they. Yep. Yeah, the pings are coming out. They know he's jumping around here. The Rocket Flare will just be off point, in fact. He's out the south, and the wraparound's coming in for Liquid. There's the jump immediately, taking out the Ursa. And now with the song, just assessing the situation, looking to try and control MP, but he's quick with the blink. Will get himself back out to safety. Another epicenter used. Yeah, whiffed as well, as he couldn't quite get in around that song. MSS will be down and ultimate. Jirch will TP out, but the recall is there for the pullback, so. And look at this push coming in. Matu with the Deso doing work. There's the jump in, though. Envy trying to man up against the Lifestealer. Has to back away. Don't pop the fortification, MP. Trying to hold Liquid back. There's hook shot from SVG. And to a man getting forced out, saved by Kuroki. Envy really wants to try and get himself stuck in for this fight here. He's been rooted up, turns now towards Lifestealer, who's been stunned by MSS, but there's the heal coming through from the Legion Commander, Matuma Man. It's just a bit too big old and scary with that rage. They've nearly got the Ursa back. But the tier three falls, Liquid, looking to be successful with this siege and push that they're able to bring together 31 minutes into the game. And we'll see how adamant they're going to be in sticking around here. The racks are exposed. They start to send the illusions in. The MP will have that full five man, but no epicenter. It looks like, though, with Ursa coming back up, Liquid will back away. Roshan's going to be back up soon, and maybe they'll look to try and take that before MP get their hands on it for a third time. Liquid's draft is just incredibly disruptive. They, they can get pick off so fast now that Dazzle actually couldn't react with a grave with how fast they blew up the Ursa. The, the Lifestealer and Legion have enough critical damage output that heroes die incredibly fast so that Jewel Dazzle can't react and then there's stuff like the song just to prevent any counter initiation the Radiance Illusion stopping it. Sand King Blink very difficult for NP to approach team fights. that's before even mentioning anything of what Monkey King is bringing to the table with, with his chaotic spells and fights so mentioned Roche going Liquid's way they are going to start working on an attempt it but I'm not sure NP will give this one up without a fight They've got <coughs> the ultimate backup as well for Sand King. Hook shots there as well for SVG Salau to, to try and get that initiation, but at the same GH time, is GH bottom, is yeah. Yeah, pressuring in these lanes. It's going to make it very tight neck uh, for MP. This is where it's like uh, two terrible decisions. You either give up a Rax or you give up Roche. MP just goes bull. He jumps straight up to the high ground. The song will be there from GH. He does have his team behind him who are trying to make their way around from the sidelines. SVG in with a hook shot. Cogs to block Liquid away. They will force Liquid away from this. They know that the song's down. Can they do anything with that knowledge? They're jumping forward, trouble. looking for GH. He's got that Octarine Radiance heal, though, and he's duking it around the tree line. MSS comes in with a stun onto Miracle. Envy jumps forward as well, but Miracle's going to be allowed to get away. Matuma Man trying to focus the anti mage. Doesn't quite have the damage to bring him down, but they've already taken down two. MSS, another the Sandstorm, but they have the vision. He tried to get himself away with the Burrow Strike over. He'll make it for the time being, but Miracle just reaching over the cliff there with his staff. Takes down a third. Gem hits the deck. And at the end of the day, MP just can't get what they were desperately hoping for. Bottom lane, GH cleaning up the melee racks. Owie will jump forward, but GH sings the song of his people. The booster travel is still on cooldown. He Recall. will get recalled out. The power there, the cotton lager combination. As they get the racks, they get out. They won the team fight. They take Roche, and they'll be getting Cheese and Aegis out of this as well, gods. Mobility. Naga, like, split pushes bottom. Forces pressure on the lane of Rax and gets recalled into a fight. So disruptive with the song. They were chasing Naga around with the song on cooldown. It looked a bit dicey for GH for a little while. If he got bashed up by the Ursa or locked in place, so that a if AM and Ursa got on top of that Naga when she didn't have song, it could have been a lost team fight there. But she managed to just use her elusiveness, the Manta style, I believe, getting out of some of the, the slows as well to get away. And with that, 
They waste a lot of time chasing a Naga that they don't end up killing, and while that's going on, Dazzle's dying, Clockwork's dying. The supports on MP are very under farm compared to Liquid right now, and that's where you notice the biggest difference in these fights. They just melt to absolutely anything. Dazzle wants to be graving cores getting jeweled, but often Dazzle will just have to find, him, find himself graving himself because of how squishy he is. And the pressure is going massively amped up now that Liquid have this Aegis and Cheese. You know, they're straight in position on this top lane. NP really need a fantastic team fight. They need some sort of huge opening to, to be able to turn this around. MP will jump forward and be jumped to Batuma Man. Gets the Bash and Lifestealer starting to melt quickly. Has the cheese in the ages though. Is it going to be forced to use it yet? Gets himself out with the Marmlet Tog. Rage, but it uh, looks like actually the, the, okay, the Rocket Flare was able to snipe him whilst he was toggling. So they will at least pop the Aegis there, MP. That was a nice free Aegis claim. You take those, as Matu will be back on the high ground though, still with cheese. Nice just trying to hold back the wave, but it won't hold back Matu. As he's raged up, bringing the tower down. And he's very, very low. And with on the anti-mage, not too uh, unhappy with the pressure in lanes as he will continue to be able to clean up and get that farm as he's picked up the butterfly on top of the MKB, now complete as well. Looking very, very big indeed. The illusions being sent across towards that top lane though. And again, the range racks being pushed down on the bottom. GH is able to claim the top tower. The second set of racks exposed. So three prompt push, it's there's illusions going in mid. Four so much pressure. Top. Illusions bottom, real Naga mid. You can't even go in the Naga. He's going to sleep while Matu goes oh for the top Oh my racks. goodness, yeah. Locking NP in place while they just, all they can do is watch. Now they'll jump in, immediately bringing Matu down low, but he's into the creep. He's going to be fine. MSS building up the epicenter and they'll take mind control. Okay, not Matu bad. rides his way out on the creep wave. He'll be all right. But yeah, bringing down the Legion, that may put a stop to, to what Liquid are doing, but it's just this illusion spam consistently coming in. Looking away at the range racks, bringing them down and down and down. I think it was the right idea going for that sleep, that song it racks play, but they just weren't in, they weren't fast enough about it. If, the, if both Legion and Lifestealer were instantly on the racks, like if Mind Control blinks in and hits with the Lifestealer, they get the melee racks, but felt like there was a moment of hesitation where it was like, oh, GH just did something really good, let's get in there, whereas it should have been like coordinated where he sleeps as they're running in. Either way, situation still looks pretty good for Liquid. They lose a Legion Commander. They have lost the Aegis and all, but they're still keeping all the lanes pushed in. This is just one of those classic Naga games. You're NP, you can't leave your base. You've got to constantly just play Illusion Hunter right now. And anytime you try and push out one lane, another lane pops up. It's whack-a-mole. You, you solve one problem, two more pop up. Keep it the light with the Ags complete as well now. Some big items coming out for the side of Liquid. Thanks to those objectives they've been able to take. Kuroki is out on his own. MSS not spotting him out yet, of course. The Rocket Flare ooh, will actually clip him there. So now MSS knows this is a chance to go, but again, a little bit off the mark there with the Burrow Strike. Kuroki is going to be able to walk away. In fact, MSS himself needs to be a bit careful. All right, Envy comes in, clears the wave out, makes sure that there's no Naga Siren for this altercation. He'll continue to chase Kuroki, recall who's that. now recalled Miracle in. Miracle with the Silver Edge. Could be there to help try and turn, but already Envy's just ripped apart this Keeper of the Light. The gem hits the deck. MSS comes forward trying to take it, but Miracle was able to grab it just in time. And they may have lost the Keeper of the Light, but they won't lose the gem. Salvage there, Cuddle respawning pretty fast with that respawn talent too. Oh man, and just look at GH. Meanwhile, he's just pushing yep. in. He's just taking a tier three. And he's getting top range rack slowly. Whatever bit of damage you do here is going to be permanent damage. He'll focus the range racks before the melees, knowing that his team aren't going for a full efforted push right now. And just slowly whittling away. Death by a thousand cuts. Absolutely. How do you deal with this if you're MP? The, the Naga, Siren, GH. Yeah, we saw him before have a brilliant game. This game, a little bit closer. I mean, we can see him, him and Envy on par, but just the amount that he can do, it, it just seems it's so much more. He's having so much more effect on this game. Got a shadow blade out, find some picks, like sanking. It's, and that's been MSS's role. He's got a very tough ass. Like this game really comes down to him and his ability to find pickoffs. He's got to do so much for this game to work for MP and Liquid more than anything have done a really good job of just responding to that that sanking and his aggressive moves. The coddle with the gem and Ag's vision has kind of been a pseudo counter to that sanking shadow blade and. Uh, and, and AUI on the Ursa just doesn't have like the same mobility. He's got a Blink Dagger, but he can't Shadow Blade around. He can't really always be with the Sand King. Bottom lane, Miracle. That's, That's been found out. Yeah, Envy coming in, trying to help MSS out here, but with the Song, he could be in trouble. 
Your hookshot's gonna miss. SVG now as well could be in a bit of a bad spot. Envy tries to get himself out, will blink away. The Cogs are out down. They've surrounded GH. MSS trying to build up the epicenter, but the net's there to cancel it. GH turns towards SVG as well, won't get the clock kill. But meanwhile, mid lane, the racks are down. Oh, Liquid, megas. they've got Megas. Yep. That, that was the solution they came up with. Boots are traveled level two on anti-mage, TP in oh on the sand my, did That burst, it just disappeared. That was less of a bear, more of a Winnie the Pooh. He got absolutely shredded. And NP, they'll try their best. And oh, my, what the fudge? <laughs> Envy. Uh, okay. That, Thank you. I don't think I've seen a big amount of void in my life. He just... What? Can we? I'm sure we got a replay on that. We must do. 8.6k. He did more damage with that one spell than his MMR. That was insane. Oh, wow. Can we, <laughs> can we see that again and again and again? Who yeah. did he hit? Let's all watch that for the rest so of the So he's going on GH. Probably GH. GH is the... it must be, he's got such a massive mana pool. He, oh, he, oh. No, okay. Oh. Just. Oh. And again. Oh, yeah. Uh, Oh, here we go. Oh. oh, and again. Oh, oh, the, just, <laughs> what the hell? You couldn't have asked for a better birthday present. No, that is was... Showed up. He's got a rapier. There we go. Oh, we got him on. <laughs> what the? Oh, and look at this. Jackie Mao. in. Time He's to throw. Oh, the oh my no. God. I didn't mean it, Jackie. I didn't mean the time to throw seriously. Come on, Jackie. He hasn't got trouble. SVG's recovered the rapier. He's got brown boots. He's got to get himself out of here. He's losing mana. Force him. Do something. Help me. I'm a clock with a rapier. Oh, no. Get out of this. Miracle. Oh, he wants that rapier. He comes to oh, Envy. Ow. No, he can pass it to Envy. Envy's got it again. Here we go. Envy's got it again. We're good. Okay, so Colt's brought back. Mind control down for 50 uh, seconds. Does that buy back the veil? Meanwhile, in the base, they're losing tier fours though. Bit doesn't of a pass matter. Put on it. Jumps in, gets the bash. They've got the bonus strikes as well. GH can't get the song for time. He's forced back. Now he's got the song. They've got the setup. Miracle. He's going to look to show off the power of the Monkey King against the Wukong Saman. Looks to line it up for the perfect three man battle. He's trying to get it. The clock's down. Envy pulls the Manta. But he's getting bashed up. Can he get out in time? He blinks out of the Wukong Saman to the north, but the towers take him down. The rapier hits the deck. GG, well played. Is called. The game is over. <sighs> Never before have I seen such like a classic Envy game. I mean, it was quite a Except calm, relaxing win. game, a bit of farm, and then at the end, just a casual ultra kill mana void into a rapier pickup, and then a losing the rapier to a blade mailed legion commander. Liquid looked way too like blasé about that, yeah. that game. Yeah, I mean, GH you know? is having a bit of a smile. He's like, oh. And Matsu's got his eyes wide open, like, what the <laughs> Oh, <sorry>. oh. <laughs> But uh, Mike Chow, of course, cool as ever, just like... Yeah, yeah. he made the, the clutch duel on the with the blade... I mean, blade Mike mail. Mike like, yeah, that's right, mate. You try and take me on whilst <laughs> I've got my blade mail. Mm. Uh, <sighs> that was, well, that was quite it. the ending to an anti-mage Naga yeah. game, you know. I'm, I'm glad we got that exclamation mark to finish the group stages with, so... No, more question mark, I think, really. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> Liquid. Definitely for you. Doing it there. So Liquid with that win... They've done it. The panel expl explained the formalities, what this exactly means. But uh, Liquid, at the end of the day, essentially winning the, the best of three, which I do advise going back and watching season one of it, which was yesterday, where mm -hmm. we saw uh, essentially game one and, and game two in the, the group stages. But exciting tiebreakers. Final exciting words, tiebreakers. No, I'm looking forward to the main event now as uh, Liquid uh, I mean, seem to have found yeah. themselves. They had a really rough start. They were bottom of their group going into day three, and end of day three, they're third place with a pretty respectable score and some good wins. So I think it's a very different liquid that we're seeing just today and main event should be even better from them. Absolutely. On, on the note of MP, we've seen, what, three rapier pickups in the group stages. Main event MP, it could get pretty exciting. We'll, uh, we'll have to wait and see. But of course, don't go anywhere. We're going back to you, Paul, to hear exactly uh, your thoughts and reactions to that incredible best of one. Yeah, what an incredible best of one as well. Thank you very much, Odie Pixel, and happy birthday once more. Uh, what, what a birthday present that Ultra Kill was. Uh, gods alongside him as well. And um, back with Purge and PPD. Um, Kevin, <laughs> fun ending to the game, but it was this did not the result that MP wanted. Yeah, not at all. That was three game, three losses in a row for them. Yep. It's got to be really disappointing. Yeah, they've gone just from being on the verge of being in the top half of the bracket, Peter. Yeah. I mean, they just lost just the qualifiers to Kiev. This is nothing. Yeah. That's true. That's that's they, true. They, they they've, been, they've been through some turmoil. They'll be fine. Yeah, yeah, I think they will be. Um, definitely a tough game, though. Uh, weird laning stare. Weird weird hero assignments from Liquid. Kind of their new uh, throw GH on Naga Siren thing. Um, 
I, th I think they had a lot of issues making some of their heroes work. The clockwork felt pretty ineffective due to the due to the um, Naga pick. There's constant songs right when when the fight should go well, and uh, Mind Control just did such a good job getting duels all over the place. But uh, it seemed like they had a lot of trouble turning uh, ganks into kills on NP side. Yeah, the, the synergy really just wasn't there. And like with the Ursa and Anti Mage together, kind of like you know, it's like two carry setup that we're we seeing go. from NP. And yeah, this is like Boom. pretty cool moment. It's a shame they lost this game, or else it would like go down as like incredibly epic forever. Yeah. yeah. But there's like very few moments that like make me like do like a double take and kind of turn my head the other side of it. <laughs> That, that moment right there, I think Naga <laughs> would have died if he wasn't in between the, the tower and the barracks because Envy wouldn't have had to walk around the whole tower. Maybe he could have killed him there. He'd buy back anyways. This game was okay, fair point. <laughs> pretty pretty over at this point, but regardless, I, I, it was pretty cool. It was. I, I feel like um, Envy probably should have gone Abyssal over Butterfly this game maybe because they, they just had a huge lockdown problems. That was obvious. Every time he'd blink on somebody, he'd get those Monkey King or the, uh, yeah, the MKB mini bashes, but that was about it. Um, yeah. It wasn't a really good way to lock people down unless like like, his best lockdown in that game was uh, Mind Control dueling somebody. He's like, oh, the Mind Control is actually going to stop moving for a couple seconds here. Uh, it was just difficult for them to get kills. Yeah. What did he make of Miracle? It's it's weird because he's playing this, like, four-position support, and it's like, are support players just not that good, or is Miracle that good? Because he's getting so much done with this hero in the early game. It's Yeah, it's kind of incredible, actually. He's just changed like he ne I mean, he doesn't normally play four position. Look at his net worth. Yeah. He, had, he had more eight, net worth than eight, Life Sealer. 8, 6, 10, 24 K. Yeah, it's like, you look at other four players, and other, like, you know, we've seen a lot of Monkey King this tournament, and not a lot of them kind of play like this, or yeah. have played this well. And then it's like, eh. I like that he got a lot of farm, at least. It makes the makes the player more justified on the role. Maybe, he's, the just, maybe he's actually a four player. You know, maybe in a year or two. Maybe he's a four player hiding in mid. Yeah, maybe a mir uh, in a year or two, Miracle will be playing four. Maybe. Never know. Yeah. At least. Possible, I suppose. It's a nice viable option for Liquid to kind of get creative in their drafts. Hmm. He's going to be playing mid uh, a little bit later on because he's taking on Arteezy in the 1v1. That's true. He might, maybe he'll pick Monkey King, or if he gets to the finals, he might pick maybe Monkey King <laughs> in Monkey that King 3 Monkey King the second game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That might be a long, a long 1v1. Um, let's wrap up on this uh, Liquid MP game, um, Kevin. Disappointing for MP, but uh, I, when you when you look at the scoreboard and the league table itself, and you think, well, okay, they finished fourth. That's actually a respectable result. Yeah, it's n it's not bad. It's above what we probably expected for for NP. But when they, you know, it's it's the start the way the group stage started just made it look weird because Liquid looked at the bottom, NP yeah. was towards the top, and then by the time this all rounds out, the the final standings don't look that weird, China with the exception Dota. of EG is EG lower than low. we expect. Yeah. So it, it's what happened is a little reflection of what we expected with the tournament starting. Um, so in some ways, you can't really fault NP too much for it, but I just feel like it will be a morale killer for sure, what mm. happened today. Yeah, so Liquid get the choice. As you can see, they're, they're in third place. So they get the choice of uh, playing the team that they want to play in Group A. Can we take a look at Group A as well and just show you where they finished? If you said it was Faceless or uh, VGJ. Yeah, and, and Faceless were in the bottom. So I think it's, uh, I think it's the very VGJ, likely that Liquid's yeah. going to choose Faceless and then NP's going to be up against VGJ, which should be a good match. I think those teams might be um, kind of like similar skilled. But regardless of the like the winner and loser of this match, I don't think NP's too disappointed. They Faceless and VGJ... I'm it's like not a bad round one opponent for them. Yeah. It's not bad. Either uh, one. Something that really stuck out to me in that in that graph was the only difference between uh, Newbie in second place and EG was that they won one more 2-0. Yeah. So it was literally one game difference, put EG like second to bottom versus yeah. second in their group. That's just incredible. Yeah. It's, uh, and it could have been that EG Newbie game on day one. And now we're going to have EG wings. Yeah. Potentially. Oh, well, do potentially. we figure out when we're doing draws? Yeah, so I've been told we are going to do the draft if it hasn't already been done at the end of the match when Liquid won, so that they get the choice of what they're doing. And then they'll get it all done, and then we'll bring the bracket. It'll either be, um, I mean, uh, hopefully, during the 1v1s. So either okay. during the 1v1s or at the end of so the 1v1s. So stay tuned. So, yeah, so, so definitely stay tuned with us uh, in terms of that. So let's, let's just finish up on uh, MP versus Liquid. Uh, standout player for you? Um, I think Mind Control played really well. I don't know if I'd give him MVP, but he's I like sticks Miracle out Monkey to me. King. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. GH's Naga is really good. I think other other teams need to look out for that. Yeah, I mean, when you when you think the the kind of player he is and what he's done and how he's achieved that and, and playing all over the place, do you, do you necessarily agree with with that, or do you want him to focus on one position and just stick to that position and? 
be that man they played around, like he did in OG, where they, they literally just played around him. They make it work. I don't think you can yeah. fault him for it. I, I mean, agree. It's it, most players go into pubs and they, they play random roles. I'm not saying that that's obviously very difficult in the pro scene, but yeah, if they make sure. it work, what, why, why fault them? Play to win. Yeah. And Monkey King is kind of a hero that transitions to um, kind of like a core. and later. If and you later get the game. Midas build, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he, get, he was incredibly far in that game. Yeah. But he did a lot of split pushing. He, he made the maps, made sure the map was always pushed towards the enemy towers, makes it a little easier for Naga as well. Um, in some ways, if he didn't do that, all the farm would have been on Naga. So I think uh, the farm he took was definitely justified, I would mm. say. And okay. he still fulfilled his role. So, yeah, it was worth it. Anti-Mage, another loss. Hero continues yeah, to look super hasn't underwhelming. It hasn't looked good, has it? No. In almost anyone's hands. I thought it looked good. It's just the they didn't win. That was about it. Yeah. He got good farm. I mean, it, it was as good as we've seen, but it yeah, still hasn't produced there. a win. Yeah. Yeah. Always fun seeing the rapier, though. Even if it is on the on ground AM, for a little bit. Not the best, not the best <laughs> rapier hero. Uh, just AM, AM has trouble closing games out. Like Ember Spirit, if there's two heroes left, you're like, yeah, I'm going to kill all these guys. But yeah. Anti Mage is like, oh, I've got Manta cooldown, uh, Abyssal cooldown. And once those are gone, it's pretty hard for me to get a kill. I need somebody to help me set it, set yeah. it up. And I think that's it's kind of like the same issue as Quap, I feel. Like you have to buy all these items that help you control and guarantee kills. Uh, whereas heroes like Ember and all that other stuff, they just do it by themselves. Yeah. All right. So. Thank you very much, uh, PPD and Purge. We will, of course, hear more from both of those fine gentlemen uh, in the main stage, main group stage, which, uh, the, sorry, the main part of the uh, tournament on the main stage in three days from now. That is it from the group stages. We've had three fantastic days of group matches, but we aren't done yet on day three because next coming up, we have the 1v1s. Just a reminder for you as well. Miracle RTZ, Sumail Paparazzi, SEC versus Blink, and if that didn't tickle your fancy, Burning versus Eternal Envy. All playing SF, all playing mid for 1v1. 30,000 yuan on the line and a trophy as well. Plenty to look forward to. Shiva will be back in the hot seat with some special guests to cover the 1v1s. That's coming up next. We'll see you soon.